So what we're doing right now is getting all of our reference lines because there's going to be a stagger, uh, stagger joint and uh, we're going to be running our sheets vertically which means that we won't have necessarily a consistent single line that we can go off of because we can't necessarily snap on our foundation. Good? Good? Perfect. So what we did was we used our soffit nailer as our um, consistent point because we knew the foundation had some variances so we didn't want to go with the foundation up. We're going to actually mark from the soffit down and now that we have these two lines established we can use them to get measurements so that we can cut the pieces that have to be at the bottom. So there'll be a four foot and then an eight foot piece. And that's gonna go the whole way down. We're gonna go 40 inches, Greg. Your way? Just a hair? Top or bottom, middle? The two. The top two. Yeah. I could probably come back your way just a hair. Okay. So one of the things we did when designing the structure was knowing that we were gonna use sheathing, we wanted to also design the layout so that we could be as efficient as possible. And for the most part, we're gonna have almost little to no waste on this building. The back wall is about 14 inches taller because of the grade with the foundation. So we've got to cut these first ones down um, to 40 inches and then also uh, 88 inches. So we've got a nice four foot stagger and definitely going to use the track saw. All right, so the nice thing is that, you know, we knew that we were gonna be installing uh, four by eight sheathing on this project. Therefore, we designed it so that we could be as efficient as possible, have as little bit of waste as possible. You know, with an, a 16 foot tall building, we're gonna basically have two eight foot vertical pieces of weather logic, and then we're gonna have a four foot, eight foot, four foot piece of weather logic, which means we're gonna have like hardly any waste. You can see behind me, I've got some piles set up. We went ahead and pre-cut the panels that we know we're gonna to have to cut. The rest should be full sheets. And now we gotta establish a perfectly plumb line to start those vertical sheets on, make sure our building is plumb and everything is where we want it. And then we can start installing the sheathing. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering, whenever you're doing projects with big companies, which they're they're sponsoring this. I'm recording some content for them, which I'm very thankful for. My client is very thankful for uh, because they're gonna get an amazing product. But we gotta wear, and we always should, but sometimes we lack a little bit of that real motivation to put on the hard hat or the safety gloves. Um, but before all the people jump into the comments and say, why are you guys wearing hard hat? We gotta follow the rules when you're playing by the rules. So we've got this two foot line marked. And the reason we did two foot is because when we run our vertical LP siding, that, those pieces are 16 inches. If we started with a full four footer, then our 16 inch spacing on our vertical siding would line up right with our sheets. And we don't want that. We want a nice overlap just because I think it'll be a better end result. So we're going to start two foot in, which should allow all of our um, vertical siding pieces to go over top of a joint. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my 300G, get a nice plumb laser line. And Greg is gonna try to find it up there, which I can see it, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. You see it? Right here. Yeah, there it is, man. It's not exactly easy to see a plumb line like this outside, but thankfully we're in a shadow and the green is a little bit brighter than a red. I just didn't wanna to have to get out the receiver to have to do this. All right, buddy. You wanna drop your chalk line or? Mm, I not have enough chalk on it. Okay, yeah, here. We'll try it. Well, if you wanna reach down, you can grab mine. Good? Yeah. Hey, Greg, just for, uh, sh you know, just for uh, the heck of it, what's our measurement to the end of our building? 24. Wait, are you telling me it's exactly 24? Uh, I'm not saying it, it, it's exactly 24, but it's 24. Okay, so good, our building is plumb. So now we can start going ahead and running some, uh, you know what I didn't do? Put a battery in my gun.
right there. Just hit the perimeter like I did. And then we'll come back through with the gun. What we're gonna do is just go ahead and hit the perimeter with some nails to hold it in place, make sure everything is laying flat. But just for the sake of not having a compressor hose, running a compressor all day, we're gonna do that all at once and we're just gonna go crazy doing all the nailing at one time. I might as well dial mine back a little. Oh, that's beauty right there. I can respect that. If you can keep that up, that's amazing. That's set to perfection. That is, man. Greg, that is. <laughs> that, that's better. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is use shingle nails which have the proper spacing. So you gotta make sure you space your sheathing on all sides. That way you don't get in problems or you don't have any problems with expansion on your sheets. So you can see here, we're just using a nail here to get our proper eighth inch spacing along all edges. And you might be saying, well, that's a pretty big gap. Don't worry. Well, this is all gonna get tape sealed and it's gonna be air and waterproof. Now this is the real reason I got a hard head on Greg, because I'm gonna stand up right into your lift. You always said you're hard headed, but I guess it only goes for so so far. This stuff really does go up pretty darn quick. And what's really nice is that all we're gonna have to do is nail this off and run our tape on the seams. And that's it, no house wrap. And we've got our WRB and our structural panel all in one. Other nice thing is these aren't that heavy. No, they're not. Hey, hey, wrong one, wrong one. Wrong one? Wrong one, yep. This is your 88. Oh, it is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm we'll like, save that for right here then. Ha <laughs> Blame that on you, Greg. Yeah. Okay, now this is the one I wanted. So make sure that when you're nailing, you stay 3 eighths of an inch at least off of your edge. And it's nice, we've got this two by six wall girt. We're actually able to get two nails every 24 inches on this. And if you have an issue like this where it's not driven enough, make sure that you drive it flush. And if you end up getting one, uh, luckily I don't have to worry about this because it's gonna get taped, that is overdriven and too far into your substrate, make sure you tape those nails off. Now, if I forget somehow and I don't record it because it's annoying, we are gonna come back through and do the proper nailing pattern on this sheet. You want a six inch nail pattern around your perimeter and 12 inches through the field. I usually over nail it. They got these nice markings so you know where you're at. I usually end up hitting about five nails here through the middle. And um, we're gonna do that with a compressor and a coil gun, which is gonna have a lot more capacity. It's just, it's nice using the nail guns, uh, no hose, it's just quiet and uh, 
So that's the, that's the deal. We will come back through and nail this differently. Now really the tape is probably the most important part because this is what's going to give you that finished air and water barrier. Now I just went ahead and I smoothed it with my hand, but that's not good enough. You got to take your squeegee that comes with the tape and work it so that there's no air bubbles and the pressure is, what's, is what is going to activate this tape. And I could pull it off right now and maybe I'll show you guys after a few days, I think I don't know if it's seven days or what, but uh, this is gonna keep getting stickier. And then it's gonna be really hard to pull off without also pulling off the fibers of the panel itself. Definitely, definitely use your squeegee. I like to just work out from the middle and then go either way. Make sure you're working your bubbles out and that stuff's gonna lay nice and flat. Now obviously in a perfect world, I might go ahead and run a piece from the top to the bottom, but this allows Greg to keep nailing off while I'm getting as much done as possible from the ground. Oh no, my ISO tunes. What happened? I don't know, the case was on the ground getting trashed. That's all right, tough as nails, man. Where's case, dude? You broke your ISO tunes, you just go to isotunes.com and pick out whichever ISO tunes you like, and then- you... But I don't want to pay full price for an ISO tunes. You don't have to, that's a great thing. When you get to the checkout, you type in the code RRB in the discount bar, and then you- RRB10? RRB10. And then I can save $10. Ten dollars, yeah. That's not a bad deal. RRB10 for the discount code. I better remember that, Greg. Thank you. All right, so I'm cutting a sheet that's going to go up the gable end, and really I only need one dimension because I'm just going to use simple math to figure out my other side. Greg gave me a dimension of 81 and 7 eighths. For all intents and purposes, let's just say it's 82. This is a four foot wide panel. I have a 412 pitch roof. Therefore, from 82 over four foot, I gotta drop it down 16 inches. And I think that's pretty darn simple. Um, so that is six foot 10. I'm gonna go five foot 10 minus four more inches. That's just how I like to do it because I know three foot is one foot or 12 inches in this case. And then I just gotta go four more inches because I'm used to doing, we're used to doing our three foot steel. So it's always easy on a 412 to just drop it one foot with a steel panel. These are four foot panels, therefore I gotta go 16 inches. So back so I don't get confused, I was 82, which is 610. I'm gonna go 510 and another four inches, which is 66 inches or 55 and 7 eighths if I'm gonna try and be perfect. And we don't want it to be too tight. In fact, I'm even gonna take the line on that so that I don't have any tight um, joints at the very top where my roof purlins are. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, ah, oh, just snap a line, you don't need a track saw, all that rigmarole. But personally, I think that even setting this up, you gotta come from your side, sorry. Even from setting this up, it's still easier just to run a track saw and you get a nice perfect cut without any, any real effort once the measurements are done. Okay. Run it, bro. <laughs> So 
so easy, Greg can do it. Greg, why don't you do it by getting up in the lift back where you belong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, man. Thanks for your help. I really appreciate it. I don't know what I'd do without you. All right, so this sheet, I'm still going up the angle. I got 34, which is two foot 10. And then I'm gonna go three foot 10 plus four more inches, four foot two. I remember when I started construction and I didn't really know much math or I didn't know how to apply it to my job. I would, Greg, grab a tape measure I'd get my left measurement, then I'd measure over four feet, and then I'd measure down and try to eyeball right where it had to be, and then I'd come down and make those cuts, and then guess what? They weren't perfect. If, if somebody would have said, hey, in school this math is actually gonna be very helpful to you if you become a builder, I don't know that I would have uh, you know, thought any more about it, but I'm glad that I was pretty good at math, Greg. Set me a nail and help me get this one sheet and then I can finish these bottom ones, start taping. Oh man, oh, I didn't see that coming. The wind catch it or what? Yeah. I think it's stuck actually to the sheet. That's good. Now, do you notice how this tape went from black to having these white streaks in it? That is how you're gonna know that you successfully squeegeed the tape. Well, that's the end of day one of installing the Weather Logic, which in my opinion is the first step here on building this building, totally different than anything you guys have seen us do as of yet on the channel. Uh, even though installing all, any sheathing is a lot of physical work, what's great about installing the Weather Logic is with the uh, water and air barrier built in, we don't have to worry about coming back behind 
the installation of the sheathing and installing the house wrap. So even though I love seeing that Block It custom RR Buildings house wrap up on our buildings, it's even nicer knowing that I don't have to worry about this blowing off in the wind, uh, rattling in the wind, and just in general, uh, really not doing anything but giving me an air barrier. So this is giving me the structure and the air and water barrier. So tomorrow we're gonna get back here, we'll finish the other two sides hopefully, and then um, on to the next detail, which will probably be the roof system. Please hit that subscribe button if this is something you guys wanna follow along with. If not, no big deal. Maybe you'll come back and watch another video. Thank you for your support and we'll catch you on the next one.